Uh huh. Coming to you live from the Starburn Studio in Burbank, California, it's Nobody Listens to Paula Poundstone, your comedy field guide to life. Tonight, hello, environment. Am I your friend? Are these biodegradable doggy bags eco friendly, or am I just tossing Mother Earth an everlasting bag of dog shit? Attorney Justin Arisman, professor of environmental law at the University of Southern California, guides us through the minefield of what is environmentally friendly and what makes our habitat unfriend us. Plus, Tony Anita Hull shares listener descriptions of the show, and we've moved. We'll tell you all about our new digs at Starburn Studios. Same show, different discarded mattresses. I'm Adam Felber, the man who makes sure our conversations end up in the correct topical recycling bin. And now, please welcome the woman who faithfully keeps every environment free of wasteful excess, except for the conversations on this show, Paula Poundstone! Thank you so much. All right. We you are know, in a new studio. It's a crazy We're in the new studio. Everyone said to me, it's 10 minutes from Ray Horseman. It's 10 minutes from Ray Horseman. It yeah. was. It is not 10 minutes from Ray Horseman. I've been driving and driving and driving. We had to leave Ray Horseman because we broke the door. We did break the door. With the big boat, with the keel boat from well, you the brought Lewis, Lewis and, Clark. and Clark's keel boat last week. and uh, well, Maybe that was a For a, the sake of argument, that was the, the final straw. Yeah, uh, I at, guess at, that was it for us. So we had to come here to Starburns. And, and I have to confess, everyone kept saying to me, why don't you go check it out? Why don't you go see what it looks like? And I said, well, because it's a long drive from Santa Monica. That's why I don't. And so... Captain Crinkle Bonnie Burns talked me into uh-huh. coming uh-huh. Uh, the other day, right. and she was so excited to show me, like, I don't know if it was a lounge or someone's office or if it's even part of this building, I don't know, but there was a room <laughs> that she took me into. Have you seen it? It has like- Bonnie, I don't follow Bonnie into any room ever. <laughs> it has like brown- Bonnie's got, there's a misery vibe there going on. It, it this is worse like, than Winnie Feynman. I, I, I can't do it. It has like brown, I don't know, vinyl what is that? Uh, there was a word. Leather? Yeah, but it's not leather. Vinyl? Uh, something like that. It's, pleather? Okay, pleather or something like that. It looks like a den that a rich guy invites his potential son-in-law into to grill him about marrying his daughter. Right, Do you know the, the room, room over the- there that has the bar and everything? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's cool. It's like yeah. a lounge. Yeah. It's uh, no, It's not cool. It's No, there's something about it. I can't believe we're in a new space. We've got new hosts, and, and, and you're, you're bitching about some lounge no, you don't I'm like. No, I'm really happy to have uh, everything's good, but okay. that was just, I, you know, having heard you guys describe it, oh, it's going to, you know. And it's like then a rec I went room. Into, it's not a rec room. It's a room for the wrecked. <laughs> it's it's a room that you get wrecked no, I saw, in. Definitely, I saw a bar with a big old bottle of Maker's Mark that has my name on it, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, there's something. And then the drive over here, I, I from Santa Monica, um, I went into Nevada. Was I supposed See, to? See, that's do you think I, I think the problem because yeah. Nevada should never enter into the equation. Yeah, yeah. I, I went east. Right. That was correct, wasn't right. it? I went east from yeah. Santa Monica. Yeah, Santa Monica, I'm on the water. Once you once you got to Nevada, you've gone too far. Yeah. yeah well, that's sure. what they told me because I pulled over. As soon as I crossed into Nevada, I pulled over and asked directions. Maybe you'll do better next week. I said, week. can you tell me where Starburns Studios is at? Is that what it's called, Starburn Studios? More or less. Yeah, yeah. I said, can you tell me where Starburn Studio is? And yeah. they said, oh, it's like 10 minutes from Ray Horseman Studios. It is. Uh, <laughs> no, they said. Uh, <laughs> it's really about 10 minutes. Yeah, no, they said. They said, oh, you mean that place with that kind of odd room that everybody thinks is so cool <laughs> with the pleather? Is that really the, what happened? The, the room from, um, I think it was in MAME. In MAME? <laughs> I think that room was in MAME. I think, I think it was in The Graduate. It might have been in the ground. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's where exactly Mr. Right. Robinson pours a drink. That's exactly for right. Hoffman. Yeah, it's that's that exactly room. right. That's exactly <laughs> the vibe. Yeah. No, we got the whole crew here. We've got we've got Tony Anita Hull. We've got Bonnie Burns right here on base. Uh, we've got we Jack, have returning Captain champion Frinkle. Daniel Grimsland. Thanks for being here, well, Daniel. Welcome, Sounds Daniel. Sounds great already. And then we have some new people. Oh, but right the right way- through the glass over here, we've <laughs> okay. got Land Romo. He's our, he's one of our producers. He's here at Starburns, and and we've got Jessica Gutierrez. Oh man, good the our role the there. Thank you very much. Um, but the way this is a different. Co- okay, yeah. The other studio, Ray Horseman Studios, we're all in the room together. But in this one, 
these guys are like newborn babies. They're on the <laughs> other side of a glass thing. Yeah, I think we're newborn babies to them. No, they're the newborn babies. We're in the well-lit chamber. No, That's they're they're with climate control. They're newborn babies <laughs> no. with, with already with vision problems. Aren't they cute? So they have to keep the it dark in there. For oh, them. I see. Their their clocks are already off. Their eyes are dilated. Uh, uh, you know what I did do? Um, you know to sort of warm the pl- to make the place homey, make it ours. Is I brought my snake plant. You yeah, did. It's I, a... I did. I brought my snake. Plant. But you brought something else too. Uh, I did bring something else. Uh, for our auction tonight, we're having now, another now, last, auction. Last week we had an auction that actually ended our tenure at Ray Horseman Studios. And, and and by the way, it is kind of a fond goodbye to Miranda Street. We're going to have to discover this new neighborhood, but Roger Federer's store is going to have gonna to continue, miss Roger Federer's. continue on without us. And... I, you know, fortunately, it's only 10 minutes away, so I can <laughs> yeah. swing so by So you could there. be there in an hour and a half. And keep in mind, <laughs> the people uh, who are interested in the 100 Collar Contest, I want you to know Unfortunately, that... it's over. No, it is not over. Oh, you okay. st- the 100 Collar Contest is continuing, and you continue to be able to receive the hundredth caller receives uh, any appliance you want from Roger Federer's appliance store Which over on Miranda Fetter. Street, and also you get to hang out with Adam Felber after the game. So Which you don't. Let's, uh, yeah, you do, and so uh, <laughs> that's good. But I did bring for an auction. I I decided to bring a smaller item uh, because we did get thrown out of the other place because I brought that kill bone. It broke the door, uh, uh-huh. and. Uh, it so was, what have you brought, got for us tonight for our I, I brought, online uh, auction? As you, here it is, this paper mache head from the Alcatraz escape. It's a very nice looking head. Uh, on June 11th, 1962, Frank Morris, as well as John and Clarence Anglin, uh, all three bank robbers, by the way, yeah. escaped. From, from Alcatraz. From Alcatraz. As commemorated in the movie, Escape from Alcatraz. Yeah, I think there's more than one Alcatraz escape movie. Okay. Yeah, but they all get away. Uh, anyways, the brothers, I think, were the ones who made the heads uh, from a homemade cement powder mixture that included soap and toilet paper. I believe they made four heads. And now, did they I make them in, like, shop them. class at, at the prison, or did they make them in their spare time under the— I, No, they made them in their spare time, but they did use paint from the prison art kits. Okay. Uh, a, a, a Caucasian, so, so you know, this is a fairly tone. realistic looking paper mache head. It's an amazing paper mache head, given the stress under which they had to create it. Yeah, you know. Now, I are mean, these the genuine ones from the Escape or from one of the Escape from Alcatraz movies? No, this is an original. Because uh, it looks recent. No, no, no? it was uh, uh, it was used uh, June June eleventh, nineteen sixty two. What they did, you guys, that's was... some long lived paper mache right there, Paula. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I've kept it in good condition since I've had it. Uh, Which is, I keep it okay. sealed. Uh, just sealed. <laughs> sealed. Um, but, you know, while they were escaping, um, uh-huh. and they, you know, dug a tunnel, I think it was under their, uh, under the sink, um, and they had some sheets hung over the, the drain pipe so that they couldn't, so that the, secu- you know, the guards couldn't see. But while you know, If they I was a prison guard, whenever anybody hung a sheet or a poster, I'd be like... I've seen Shawshank Redemption. You know, I kind of feel that um, I think that prison security uh, was naive back then. Um, I think, you know, they were a step away from using the honor system, really, uh, because the guards would walk by at regular intervals. Sure. And and they would, you know, shine the flashlight or whatever to make sure that the, the inmate was asleep. And so what these guys did was they put these paper mache heads on their pillows and, uh, you know, made, you know, sheets or whatever for the body. And this this passed uh, for it made the guard think that the prisoner was Sleeping there, and they were able then to Fantastic. escape. Yeah. Um, so these are there's a, these a piece are, of history, Paul. Yeah, a piece it, of history. It's exactly now, what I have for you. Yeah, is a piece of well, uh, not uh, for you because you're. Um, it, it is an online auction. Well, you okay. know, last week uh, we had a variety of bidders, and okay. uh, and you bid on the uh, on the head. Okay, so if you uh, if you head. want a bid on the head, oh look, from... we already got a bid. Look oh, at we that! Did. Oh my gosh, uh, that's, that's uh, it's just surprising. Our, once again, it's our benefactor, You're Scott Franciscus. It is, yeah. Scott Franciscus. Twenty five dollars wow. for this priceless paper mache head. Scott Franciscus, thank you for bidding. Three bank robbers who wanted nothing more than to stroll down the streets of San Francisco to do just that. It's a freedom head. That's what it is. It's a freedom head. Uh, and does Scott have it for twenty five dollars? He has lots of I soap. Can't tell 
you. can make his own. He doesn't have lots of soap. He has yeah. one bar that we sent. Well, that's plenty. He can make a teeny little head. Yeah, it's a, it's a bar of hotel soap. It would be a very small, it would be he a can make a, head. He can make a Lilliputian head. A Lilliputian head, indeed. Speaking of Lilliputian, do you have a word for us, Paula Poundstone? I do have a word, Adam, and uh, it is... Our first word at Starburns Studios in Burbank, California, oh, is... Oh, man. You're like a new dad. I'm so excited. You know, I like just, this place. You know, it's oh, it's my kid's first day at kindergarten. Oh, you just take don't a care as long there. as there's a microphone oh, and something to bitch it's, about. It's my kid's <laughs> first day of having a snack. Take a picture of that. Oh, this is going to fascinate everybody. Have you seen these little balls of water we get here? I did. They're teeny. They're Lilliputian balls of water. Okay. I have a word, Adam. It's a plum. A plum. It's a noun that yes. means calm and or self-confident. Here, I'll use it in that sentence. I have never in my entire life, even for a second, had a plum. But I am certainly happy for those who do. I would say that's true. Yeah. You Not have even... so many good qualities, but Not, yeah. a, pl- a plum. I don't have a plum. Elon, Grace. Now you, I noticed you're saying a plum. I've just always said it that way. Yeah. Well, that would be UMB. This is OMB. A plum. So you it's say it like, like bomb? So- so, all right, so if there's a loud explosion, you look around and see if a bum went off? A bum? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Whoa. I just always said a plum. Yeah, I think it's a plum. Uh, okay. It's a noun that means self-confident. Uh, yeah. He, uh, okay. Uh, I think I'm right on the edge of success in remembering these vocabulary words as a result of creating a vocabulary song each week. Yeah. Uh, that goes something like this. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, you learned how to play that on your clock. This word is a plum. It's a noun that means calm, <laughs> self-confidence. Only that Will I ever have that? Not a chance. Last week word was vituperative. It's an adjective that means bitter and abusive. What a shitty life you live. Ooh, that would be vituperative. Yes, it would. The week before that, the word was Lilliputian. It's an adjective that means very small or unimportant. (laughs) Also, it's a noun that means very small or unimportant person or thing. Going back before that, we had prandio. It's an adjective that means of or relating to a meal. I don't like the mashed potatoes with the peel. That would be a prandio conversation. I like that you have internal rhymes but no external ones. And not long ago, the word was myrmidon. It's a noun that means follower or subordinate of a powerful person, especially one who's willing to engage in dishonest activities. Who could that be? Beats me. Beats me. Let's never forget Galima Free. It's a uh, noun that means confused jumbler medley of things. Hodgepodge, who's Podge? Hodgepodge. Adam doesn't, doesn't think my sign is replicable. 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 Woo! But oh, I do. Boy. I, I do. do. I, I do. do. I do. I do. Okay, Paula Poundstone. <laughs> Again, the replicable parts of those songs are the ones that don't help you remember the definitions of the words. Hodgepodge, who's podge? Exactly. Galima free. Well, well done. There you go. How would I remember I have without some news. my song? I want to break out some news. I, you're, you're, you're not going to like, you're going to love this. Prandial. And then you're going to not like it. relating to a meal. Yes, that's yeah. what prandial means. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the mashed potatoes with the peel. That would be a prandial conversation. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> you're starting to remember a song that you've that you've written. Okay, so yeah. maybe maybe I've been wrong about this the whole time. What? Tony Tony Anita Hull what? loves this song. It's a great song. She That's told why. me before she loves it and then she told me why. <laughs> and you're going to hate this. I am. She said it's because I love the song Lullaby of Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's the thing. You won't believe me. You've I mean, stolen it, Paul. No, You've maybe, stolen it. Maybe great minds think alike, but I don't know the song The Lullaby of Broadway, and I don't want to listen to it now because I don't want to be influenced by you, it. You couldn't possibly be more influenced. <laughs> Although, I, I, would say that, I will say this. The Lullaby of Broadway had other melodic parts to it, too. That well, you, precisely. It's not the same. No. No, you know, it's not. <laughs> you know, you're a little obdurate on this subject, Adam. I am? You are. Why? I'm just pointing out 
realities, Mm -hmm. certain realities. Although I will say this, you have been. Did you stop at a rest stop on your way here? I did not. There are no rest stops. (laughs) I stopped at a rest stop. No, between here and between here and here. I live really nearby. Here and here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let me ask you something. Why is that? So we move studios, yeah. and we got further from my house and closer to yours. Why is that? Okay, we're not closer to mine. We're actually further from mine. Oh, you! Oh my God! I practically lived like a half a mile from from Miranda Street. There are nights do. where you and your kids slipped out on those mattresses. Is yeah. that correct? It's yeah, fun for the whole family. It was, yeah. like, it was like camping. Come on, Come on kids, we're gonna sleep we're under gonna the camp stars. out on a bloody mattress tonight. Daddy, we don't like the wires all over the place. Don't sleep on the wires, kids. Just move them aside. <laughs> there were always just sort of loose wires. You'd be walking on that street, yeah. and then your feet would feel so you'd look down and there'd be like wires around your yeah feet. it was really weird i feel like some sort of electronics genius lived on that street or yeah. maybe well there were a lot of appliances because of course roger federer's appliance stores over yeah. there yeah well i don't know nothing about this neighborhood yet no me neither it's all in the I, heart all, of burbank though all i know is i drove around it and around it and around it <laughs> and then i turned on olive street olive street i i, I had to go on olive for a while i have no idea why Okay. Um, hey, is there anything else with the auction? Any, anything new? Any new bids? Uh, I, there ha- I, no. <laughs> um, there is, uh, for those who are considering bidding, I want you to know that the eyebrows and the mustache uh, and the hair um, were made from hair from the barbershop that the bank robbers acquired from the barbershop. Did and they really? Very, yeah. Yeah. So they acquired hair from the barbershop? Yeah. They really wanted it to be that realistic in the middle uh, of the night? Yeah. 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 And then when they did, uh, when they did, so this escape, is real hair. You know, so it is real hair. Yeah. Ew. Um, yeah. Don't touch it because it comes off somewhat easily. Yeah, I would think um, after fifty years. Yeah. Uh, when they did um, go into the ocean, which they did, they uh, did it on a raft that they had made from fifty raincoats. Fifty raincoats. Yeah. They made the raft out of raincoats. Yeah. How, yeah. how does that work? I have no idea. I, did, I only have the... You know the fact. So, uh, you don't know, you the... know, as soon as I can get my hands on the raincoat life raft, I will do that. Where is the money from this auction going to? Uh, well, I'm waiting for um, uh, Oleg... Uh, the Russian oligarch. Yeah, the, I'm waiting bid for, last week on that. I'm one. waiting for the Russian oligarch's uh, money to come in, uh-huh. um, and then I'll let you know where it goes to. <laughs> okay. So you, a, you know, I have a lot of expenses. You certainly you do. Know, you, you don't tape do. in a place like this for free. Let no, me tell you. No, if you're driving you. all the way to Nevada, that's uh, gas money yeah. alone. <laughs> Coming up, Jane Goodall said, I like to envision the whole world as a jigsaw puzzle. If you look at the whole picture, it is overwhelming and terrifying. But if you work on your little part of the jigsaw and know that people all over the world are working on their little bits, that's what will give you hope. How can we do our little bit to be environmentally friendly? Justin Erisman is here to help us find out. That's coming up when we return on Nobody Listens to Paula Poundstone. BetterHelp, the world's largest counseling service, has asked me to talk to you about something that's really important, your mental health and how to reach out and get help. Now, you wouldn't hesitate to go to a doctor for professional care if you had a broken arm, now would you, Paula? No. Your mental health deserves the same attention. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own counselor from their network of licensed, accredited, and board-certified therapists. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. And it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's counselor network, which may not be locally available in many areas. And you're not limited to the 9 to 5 of traditional therapy. You can log into your account anytime to send a message to your counselor. Schedule weekly video or phone sessions and get timely and thoughtful responses from your own personal counselor. You'll never have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room again. Instead, get therapy from the comfort of your own living room or bedroom or dining room. It gives me such comfort to know that I wouldn't have to wait in a waiting room. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if ever needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, too, and financial aid is available. BetterHelp's mission is to provide everyone with easy, affordable, and private access to professional counseling anytime, anywhere. Get started today. But get started with this. Nobody listens to Paula Poundstone listeners. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Paula. Now that's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Paula. (laughs) 
On this day in unremarkable history, Geronimo said, Here I go! I'm gonna jump! One, two, three! William! We're back. Paula Poundstone, how you doing? Oh, good. Hey, 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 hey. What? Uh, we just got another uh, another bid. Um, oh, we did? Uh, on, our... on our online auction for this uh, paper mache bust created uh, as part of the Alcatraz escape. That is correct. Okay. Uh, it comes from uh, Paul Manafort. Paul Manafort? Former employee of Russian oligarch uh, Oleg Deripaska, uh-huh. uh, who won the Lewis and Clark keelboat uh, last week, by sure, the way. Sure, sure, sure. Um, now... Paul Manafort is in the U.S. penitentiary. He's in prison. I don't know how he'd be bidding in an online auction. Uh, well, he also, and I don't know how he does this either, but he still consults for some Republican operatives. I, I wonder if we should be worried about him bidding on the Freedom Head. Well, only it's only a Freedom Head because you've called it a Freedom Head. But, I mean, I wonder if we should contact the prison and let them know that pa- Paul Manafort is oh, bidding. Oh, you think he's, oh. I don't know. You know Paul, what? make your own paper mache head. You don't uh, want to be bidding on this. Uh, two thousand five hundred fifty dollars. Two thousand five hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, so that's where he it's... is always willing to pay more money than because like paper mache is it's literally made of like newspaper and paste, isn't it? Two thousand five hundred fifty dollars. That's what he he used to pay for a shirt. So yeah, this is nothing to Paul. Well, Manafort, that's, uh, but, that's uh, all right. Bidding stands at, at yeah. that number. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I question I question the wisdom of that because if he's trying to make a prison break, number one, it's been done. Number two, a 50-year-old paper mache head is not going to be very helpful. Well, it might be. I don't know. Well, just, you know. Wouldn't a new one be more durable? He's not looking all that spry. Point taken. <laughs> right, now, Paula, you are um, incredibly conscientious and conscious about uh, eco-friendly living. I try you really hard. You care about the environment. I do, but I, I still have all these questions. You know, it's, it's hard to know if products that claim to be environmentally friendly really are. Why? I mean— because they write it on the label, and what do I know? Well, if it's on a label, it's true, isn't it? Well, this is exactly the problem. You Not don't think always, so? Adam. No, I don't. But it's on a label. There right. are laws. How about turtle wax? Do you think that comes from a turtle? No. Well, you then that's a name. You can't trust everything that's a brand name. on a label. I wonder if we have any. I don't think anyone. Dr. Pepper's a doctor. Okay. Well, <laughs> he's certainly curing my virus. Um, I wonder if we have anyone that could help us. Well, by outstanding coincidence, we do. Just to my right, um, Justin Erisman received his Ph.D. in chemistry and his undergraduate degree in environmental studies from the University of Southern California. He subsequently earned a law degree at the Loyola Law School and serves as an adjunct faculty member of the environmental studies program at the University of Southern California, USC. Please welcome Justin Erisman, Professor! (laughs) Welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, well, thanks for joining us. Um, is there a standard for the term environmentally friendly, and who is responsible for certifying that claim? Well, so the in the U.S., uh, under federal law, we have uh, anti-false advertising laws, yes. which are regulated by the Federal Trade Commission. You see, Poundstone? So the Federal Trade Commission is in charge of policing that. So they Do actually- they? Uh, and they do, yes. But at the same time, there's a lot of products that are out there, uh, a lot of claims being made. So it's difficult to police all of them. Uh, but they do issue, in addition to uh, uh, taking enforcement actions, they've issued green guides, which they first issued in 1992, updated in 1996, 1998, and 2012, which give guidance on what claims you can make. Uh, so they have this comprehensive guidance system for companies to to consult when they want to make these type of claims. And if companies step out of bounds, the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, can bring uh, an action against those companies, either in the way of- Do they? They do. Yeah, I I don't Give me an example of like the Federal Trade Uh, Commission steps in and says, you can't call them panda chips. There's no real panda in them. Yeah, I, so I, I'm more familiar with the green guides themselves, which okay. which advise companies to stay away from sort of generalized claims of eco-friendly, um, you know, good for the environment. It, and their guidance is that if you're going to make those types of claims, you should be specific as to what it is about your claim that's eco-friendly or environmentally friendly. So the consumer knows uh, what it is that they're actually getting from this product. And they also said to be cognizant of any trade-offs that might come from the their processes or the way they do business. Right, exactly. Well, the trade-offs is the big thing. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. And I'm not sure that they do uh, follow those guidelines then because I'm forever buying things that say environmentally friendly, but they don't they don't explain why. Yeah, I mean and they do so at their peril. I mean the FTC could 
enforce the the anti uh, false advertising laws against them. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, there's so many on the market that I, enforcement is somewhat limited, right. and so there are a lot of companies that are getting away with uh, some dubious claims. Uh-huh. And it's it's your job as the consumer, if you want to be environmentally friendly, to educate yourself about what the claims are being made and by whom and whether there's actually any substance to those claims. Well, let's educate ourselves. I, I was hoping I didn't have that much work to do. Now, <laughs> let, let me you ask you something. You weren't told there'd be homework. No, I was hoping there wouldn't be. Um, when they say something is made from post-consumer content, right, uh, is that the same as that it's recyclable? If it was made from – so technically it was – Well, recyclable or recycled. So, recycle a bull. Recy- so it already went through a lifespan once, recycle right? Recycle a bull. In general, it means that it's recycled. Right. Uh, and typically, then it would also be recyclable, although there may be some instances where it has been recycled and it's now no longer recyclable. But so for an example of, of post-consumer content, uh, newspapers are a good example. So mm-hmm. let's say I buy a newspaper, I read it. I put it in the blue bin for recycling. It goes, it gets processed, and is recycled into a new newspaper. Uh And that newspaper has a label on it saying that it's post-consumer content because I've already consumed it as the consumer, which is distinct from pre-consumer content, which is uh, material that hasn't actually reached the consumer yet. So this is... Uh, I've never even heard of that. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's and, and in the labels. Typically... And I haven't seen anything genuinely new in a newspaper in years. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what is pre? Wait, say that again. What is pre-consumer? What is it? Pre-consumer content. So pre-consumer content is, you know, taking the example of newspapers, when they're printing the newspaper, you may have some rejects, for example, if it's blurry text that can't go to the consumer. Uh So they take that and they put it into the reject pile. Or maybe they have to trim some edge off of the newspaper and they put that into the waste bin. So that's pre-consumer content. Never actually got to the consumer, but they can reuse it. But it is recycled. Yeah, so they can recycle it into uh, the new newspaper that they make. So it's not what we typically think of in terms of recycling, but it does reduce uh, the use of materials. Uh, and so a lot of times when you see these types of materials, it'll say uh, includes 10 percent post-consumer content, 20 percent mm-hmm. pre-consumer content, uh, which means then it would have 70 percent new material in there as well. So that would be at least partially recycled. And in most cases, it would then still be recyclable. 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 <laughs> he's going to keep doing that, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. He's, he's mocking my vocabulary I'm not. Song. I'm singing no, along with it. It's, it's not. We're not singing it now. Okay. Um, have <laughs> you ever used toilet paper where you actually see um, uh, uh, some words printed on it that were from a newspaper? I have not, no. I, although have, I have you? Yeah. What? Yeah. It was like recycled paper and there was like a little news blurb. See, there. where I come from, we call that newspaper. Newspaper? And not toilet paper at all. It's just you're, oh, it sounds no, like you were no, using no. newspaper no, as toilet no. paper. No, no, it was no, it was actually no, I forget it was at somebody's house. Um now I <laughs> <laughs> I use toilet paper made from bamboo and it says right on the package that it is environmentally friendly. And of course it's not so friendly if you're a bamboo tree, but is there any reason to believe that toilet paper made from bamboo is any more environmentally friendly than any other source? There is. Uh, so the oh. Natural Resource Defense Council just issued a study fairly recently about traditional toilet papers, uh, showing oh, yeah. showing that uh, yeah they use um, materials that come from clear cutting the Canadian boreal forest, uh, which is a big issue environmentally. Um, clear cutting. Uh, creates a lot of environmental damage. What is clear cutting exactly? So clear cutting is when they go into an area and they basically just cut down every single tree and then haul it out and leave a barren landscape behind. So Charmin is literally cutting down the environment from whence their cartoon bears come. You could say that. <laughs> okay. I don't like the cartoon bears, but I, I don't like either. But I, I think they I deserve think a home. The whole "my hiney is clean" thing is just gross. Oh no, it's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. And the two parents staring at a piece of toilet. No, staring at the underwear on the floor, going, "I'm not going to pick it up." I didn't see that one. Yeah, I never want to see that one. Yeah, it's not good. Um, all right, so there are companies that clear cut, uh, and that's where they get their paper from. Correct. Uh-huh. Yes, but bamboo is a different is a different story altogether. Yes. So bamboo is actually a grass. And the reason that they use bamboo... Is it? It is. Yeah. Uh, bamboo is a wow, grass. Wow. It's an aggressive grass. Yes. It's a Because very... we have it in our backyard. And man, you, could, you couldn't clear cut that if you wanted to. 
It just keeps coming back. Yeah. Well, you can clear cut it, but it'll be back the next day. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Now, my daughter says I can pour water with soap suds from Method brand soap onto the mulch. Is is my daughter the one who certifies the envir- environmentally friendly claim? That's the first thing I need to know because she certainly seems to think she is. Um, but she says that if you if it's Method soap, she has a tendency to like a soap that's very expensive. Um, she said that if it's Method soap, you can pour pour those suds on the on the mulch pile. Do you think that's right? Uh, it might be. I'm not familiar with method, method soap. I don't oh, know. Oh, it's what, in my kitchen. I, I've never been to your kitchen, so no, I'm not familiar my, with it's it. It's also in my bathroom. I mean, it depends on what the chemical composition is. Um, there are, uh, so I'm not familiar with your daughter's ability to certify environmentally friendly claims, but yeah. there are uh, Low, government agencies that can certify claims. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also third parties that certify environmental claims. So you have the EPA, for example, that has some uh, certification. What are the odds of them coming to my kitchen? Do you see the problem I'm having? I do. Can you okay. get an EPA person to come by your house and check out your environmental situation? <laughs> and to car- I and don't carry think the, so. Carry no. the bucket out. To, <laughs> carry the bucket out. To, you, okay. Here's another, uh, and it was alluded to in the introduction. I use environmentally friendly dog waste bags, and I think that, that what that means is that the bags biodegrade. Um, and I remember a few years ago, you might be too young to remember this, but there were biodegradable trash bags for a while. And then we were told, oh, don't use those either because they, they broke down, but they broke down basically to smaller pieces of plastic that just flew around and went in the ocean. So the other option I have is I eat a lot of sun-made raisin bread, okay. and I could just use those bags. Well, so there's two things. You, so so, I, just, yeah. I just put my hands up in, and I yeah. don't know. Yeah, and, 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 and you've, and, you've and almost I'm, stumped the professor here, but I think yeah. he has, he has some uh, something. Is. So there's two things. The, the term degradable is actually uh, a, a term that's, that's enforced these days. So it, it, in, in order for something to be called degradable, it mm-hmm. should – as the, they say, return to nature within oh, okay. one year. I think they, one year. Yeah, they say a reasonable period of time, and then they define that as being one year. Oh yeah. So oh, use those doggy bags. Don't don't I stock d- up on those doggy bags. Well, no, I took one out of my pocket the other day from a vest that I hadn't worn in a while, and uh, it couldn't be used. I mean, it, it fell was, apart. It was very holy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's a good sign that yeah, it's that degradable. A, yeah. Unless um, you're trying to clean up waste in that moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and how about the raisin bread? <laughs> Well, so the raisin, the raisin bread bags, I would say if they're not degradable and they're not recyclable, then I would say it's a good use provided that they're providing you the sanitation that you need. You know, if it's not a sanitary bag and it's not sealing well, then – They're not sanitary bags, are there anyways? I just tie them up at the top. Well, no, I, I just mean in terms of giving you good uh, protection from what you're putting into it. Oh, I see. From picking up the waste? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, but, the sun-made raisin bags, I think they now say they're recyclable. But even that claim is sometimes – like, for example, styrofoam will sometimes be marked with one of those little recyclable uh, triangles. But that's only true if you have a styrofoam recycling facility in your area, which in Santa Monica we do not. So, like, for the um, sun-made raisin bags to say they're recyclable doesn't necessarily mean they can be recycled in the Santa Monica system. That's right. And what is recyclable is very dependent on your location. So if you want to know what you can recycle, you should check with your local waste hauler or check with the city or with L.A. County. So L.A. County has a website that gives advice as to what is recyclable. I live in a city in L.A. County that uh, gives different advice because they have more specific recycling. What city is that? Well, it's La Cunada. Oh, aren't you fancy with your extra recycling abilities, huh? Yeah, we are pretty special. We're pretty oh, proud of our town. Do yeah. they do more recycling there than other towns, La Cunada? Well, based on what we have on our waste haulers website, they do, uh-huh. at least with respect to L.A. County. So there's more materials that I can put into my recycling bin. Uh, How about styrofoam? Um, styrofoam, I don't recall. Definitely not styrofoam peanuts. Uh, oh, but I maybe large large pieces of styrofoam, it's possible. I would have yeah. to double check that. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of just swinging by your house when I need to recycle. You should just drop it off at his house in I La may Quiñata. as well. I may as well. It's kind of on your way to the studio. With a little thing of method soap so you could cheat. Yeah, it probably is on my way. I'll just follow you home tonight. How about that? Well, waste pickup is on Fridays, so just so you know. Oh, okay. Oh, that's great. That's great. 
Uh, yeah, you can yeah. Just, just load up the car next time. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to do that. There we go. Pete Seeger said, if it can't be reduced, reused, repaired, rebuilt, refurbished, refinished, resold, recycled, or composted, then it should be restricted, redesigned, or removed from production. Stay tuned to find out how to be smart about being environmentally friendly. The Cat of the Week is Lafayette from Rockingham, North Carolina. Hey, Paula, apropos of nothing, would you like to talk about your bra? You know, I have a third love bra. Third love bra, you say? I have a third love bra. So I went on their website and I filled out a form with, a, you know, asking a lot of questions about my breasts. Highly personal questions. Very personal questions about my breasts. Uh, they said, grab, a, you know, your favorite other bra uh-huh. and tell them the make and model. And uh, mine was a 65 Mustang. A challenge and, for a new uh, Brazier Yeah. Maker. Um, tell them the size and like that. And you send that in. And then there also were some illustrations of various types of breasts. And, uh, you know, you tell them, you know, A, B, C, or D. Which mine one looks is... more like this. Exactly. Sure. And um, mine had a little face on it. <laughs> and uh, and then, uh, you know, eventually you complete the form, you send it. Well, what they say is if it's not the right size when you get it, yeah. that, you, you know, send it back to them and they'll send you another. And by golly, what happened was I think that since I've been working out, I don't fit the bra that I told them about. Okay. So It's not that your breast size has changed, but your band no, size has changed because has. of the expansion of your pectoral muscles. That is precisely correct. And so anyways, I, I gave them a little bit more information, and they sent me another one. Well, that's part of their perfect fit promise. 60 days to wash it and wear it, and if you don't love it, the returns are always free. They have bras in over 80 sizes, cups AA to I, including half cups and bands 30 to 48, so you can, you can keep pumping iron, uh, all made with signature memory foam. Yeah, the foam seemed to remember me. <laughs> they said that you can get your fit in 60 seconds, and over 15 million women have taken the online Fit Finder quiz to find their perfect fit. So you're not alone, Paula. Yeah, it was pretty simple. You know, yeah, you answered various questions. You know, some stuff was about your attitude. Um, really? Uh, yeah, a lot of questions <laughs> about your attitude and your past. Do you have the right attitude for you, the bra that they're sending you? Apparently I did, because uh, when I got that new bra, you know, Fit like a glove. There you go. Yeah, because well, I, I had been wearing gloves for a while. You shouldn't be wearing a, gloves on you know, your breasts. As a, as a, as a bra, yeah. And no, this you is shouldn't. much it's, more comfortable. Because so few breasts have fingers. Anyway, Third Love also gives back. They donate all of their gently used return bras to women in need, supporting charities in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across the United States. So far, Third Love has donated over $15 million in bras. Wow. That's I didn't at least three that. bras. That's that's a nice perk right there. Yeah, it is. It is a nice perk. Uh, so go to thirdlove.com slash Paula now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash Paula for 15% off today. Thank you, Daniel. And we're back with Justin Erisman. There's a lot of letters there to get to saying Eris. Uh, yeah, you know, I hated filling in Scantron tests when I was a kid because yeah. I was the last to finish. Yeah, of course you were. <laughs> Why? Because there's a lot of letters in yeah. your name? Yeah, a lot of bubbles to fill in. Oh. Really, hell, if you're ever lost at sea and have to say who you are by, How by many a semaphore. Letters is it? You know, I've never counted. It's oh. E-H-R-E-S-M-A-N-N. And I didn't count. Oh. Neither did I. Um, but our listeners can. And please send that in at nobody listens to Paula Poundstone <laughs> at gmail.com. How many letters are in the professor's name? All right, so um, uh, Paula, you want you want to kick this off? Uh, all right, okay. So we're talking about you know ways to be an environmentally friendly. And Captain Crinkle had a question, which is, um, <laughs> are the cornstarch disposable cutlery that you get with to-go foods y- y- viable? Um, are they making a difference? They do. Uh, and so one of the advantages of those uh, materials is that they are more degradable than single-use plastics. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you have that environmental advantage that they will degrade more rapidly uh, or will degrade at all. And, you know, depending on the product, some of these products are made with uh, agricultural byproducts. So, for example, there's a company called EcoWare that uses agricultural uh, byproducts that would otherwise have been thrown away and turns those into utensils and packaging and that sort of thing. So they're actually... One, creating something that's degradable, and two, they're using material that would have just otherwise gone to waste. So there are a lot of advantages to those types of products. 
Um, yeah, I, I thought California was uh, had a law or was considering a law, or was it just Santa Monica? I can't remember. Uh, where restaurants weren't supposed to give out um, uh, the cutlery without the customer asking. Well, they have that law for straws now. So if you want a straw in a restaurant, you are going to have to ask for it. Yeah. Uh, although not everybody complies with it. So right. I have been to restaurants recently where they just gave me a straw without me asking for it. Yeah. You know, I got to say, I would love it if straws were gone entirely. Um and you know, or if I just Except had for my there own. There are people with like Parkinson's or or, yeah. or or things like that that need a straw in order to be able to to, uh, to drink. Absolutely, the, th- the the thing, the middle ground that I dislike is those paper straws. Man, do I dislike those. Those are those break down oh, halfway through your drink. Yeah. yeah, I remember we used to have them for milk in uh, the cafeteria in elementary school. We knew then they sucked. Yeah, the uh, wax wax straws. They still they still yeah. suck. No, in fact, we thought we were living high when we got the plastic ones. But that's you're not a paper straw apologist, are you, Professor? I am not. No, okay. I um, detest the paper straws. I I do <laughs> excellent. I do like the uh, silicone straws and the metal straws, although you have to actually clean those. Um, yeah. I have uh, silicone straws in my breasts. Do you really? um, Yeah. <laughs> that might account know. for some of the shape f- yeah. issues that you've been facing lately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that's germane. Probably shouldn't have got um, it put in. Um, let, let me ask you something. Okay. I use uh, bar cloths uh, to clean all day long in my house. Uh, you know, little terry cloth rags. Instead it, of paper towels. Instead of paper towels, exactly. And uh, you know, my cats pee all over the house. I'm forever spilling things. There's a lot of use for those bar rags. On the other hand, that means about once a week, I wash a load of cloths. Now, you were talking before about the trade Also, you use a coal-powered uh, laundry machine, don't I you? I am using a coal-power laundry machine, and my children <laughs> are the miners. Oh. So, <laughs> so just, is, that, is that offset by by using by not using paper towels? I don't towels? know. Professor? Well, so I would say in an area like Southern California where water is scarce, uh, yeah. you may want to switch to a hybrid method and not shun paper towels completely. Oh. So that's what I do. I, yeah. I use both the, as you say, the bar cloths and paper towels. So if do you have 13 a, cats? I do not, no. Okay. I'm <laughs> actually very allergic to cats. So oh, are you? 13, yeah, oh 13 my cats would probably put me in the hospital. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm so, surprised. Paula, make sure there's no fur in the recycling when you bring it over to his house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, even my vest has uh, fur all over it. I'm surprised you haven't had a reaction. Oh, well, okay. That's important to know because I have eschewed paper towels. Yeah, uh-huh. no, I would I would say the hybrid method of using paper towels when there's a small spill uh, or something that would soil the rag that you can only use at one time. Yeah. Uh, if you can use a cloth multiple times or reserve it for bigger spills, yeah. that would probably be a better method. If you're in an area where there's plenty of water and a water resource is not a concern, then maybe you would just use... Well, I think that's nowhere now, isn't it? I, well, I except it's... for the seas are rising. But I, ultimately, water is going to be the, the, the thing that we fight over. Yeah, sure. And But there are some areas, you know, maybe in the Pacific Northwest where they don't have water scarcity. But uh-huh. certainly... In well, that... you can just leave your bar cloth out on the porch at night and it'll get washed it'll by get washed nature by... with nature a little method it. soap on it. Nature will wash it with, the, <laughs> with its method. Let's talk about reduce, reuse, recycle. Yes. Because you had something interesting to say about that in that I just thought of those as three things we should do. No, so those are ordered uh, in level of importance. So, so recycle is the least important of those. Well, it's sort of our last stop. Uh, we want to before we get to recycle, we want to reduce and then reuse and then, if needed, recycle. And and is how much of a difference is that going to make? Well, on an individual basis or on a planetary basis. On, on a planetary basis, it does have an impact. I mean, if we can all say cut our waste in half, that will have a huge impact on uh, the amount of waste that's going into landfills, uh, the amount of um, materials that are being made uh, it, for us to use, which will reduce the emissions from the manufacturing. Um, so it can have a big impact. Like, is, is me going to the store and looking for eco-friendly products the, the, the most efficient way for us to reduce and reuse and recycle our resources? It's not. So I think one of the most frustrating parts for me of the contemporary environmental movement is that a lot of the onus for environmental protection has been pushed onto the individual. And, you know, as we've been discussing during this uh, episode, it requires a lot of education uh, on the part of the individual to know what you need to do in order to be environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. And I think we could have a much bigger impact if we push that onus back onto our governments, back onto large corporations, so that they can do more of the top-down command and control environmental environmental protection that is necessary. Well, I think part of the reason for that, right, because we always used to be told 
um, by uh, the environmental movement that um, we uh, we are activists with our money. So what you purchase uh, or what you don't purchase is is your activism to some degree, right? So if I'm not supporting a company that does bad things, then they'll stop doing bad things. Right, absolutely. And we can't buy our way out of these problems. I think the first step is... What? Un- <laughs> That's right. Uh, no, I, on the, the first step is for individuals to reduce their own consumption. Right. Um, and, you know, if the, these products that they're buying make them feel good about their environmentalism and work as a gateway drug towards more environmentalism, I think that's fantastic. You know, if people want to – if people buy bamboo toilet paper and it makes them feel good and they want to chase that dragon to buy more environmentally friendly products or donate to environmental ad- advocacy groups, that's fantastic. But right now what we really need is um, – large structural changes that will get us out of the problems that we have. And going and for that we look to Paula Poundstone. Well, no. If um so all right, so if we're talking to our listeners that are sitting with a, a pad of paper beside them and a pen right now, determined while driving. Determined to act on what you have to say, what are the top 3 things that you would ask of them to have a more effective movement? I, well, first, I would say is on an individual level is reduce your own consumption. Mm-hmm. The second thing is I would. It, You're calling it, them fat. You're uh, calling our listeners fat. I am not. No, he's not talking. <laughs> it sounds like talking he about was. that kind of it, consumption. No, it sounds like he just you know. No, no, this isn't food consumption. This is just material. I think you're perfect the way you are, listeners. Just <laughs> no, so you know, he's talking about and, I, okay. I, I, I and, and just so you know, the 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 whole concept of retail therapy is flawed. Um, you know, the, when people buy more stuff, it doesn't actually make them happier. The no. studies have shown that buying less stuff makes you happier. And so, you know, in terms of reducing your impact, you could think about maybe not buying. Uh, some unnecessary clothing. The fashion industry has a huge impact on the environment that people are not always aware of. Uh-huh. So I think that would be the first step is just reducing your consumption. The The second step would be educating yourself on environmental issues and, and finding what you're passionate about. So if the reason you're buying uh, toilet paper that's made from bamboo is because you care about Canadian boreal forest, then investigate the issue of Canadian boreal forest and how we protect it. Because if you stop buying the toilet paper, that's not necessarily going to stop the forest from being cut down. They okay. still might cut down the forest to use it for other products as well. So I think mm-hmm. educating yourself and finding what you're really passionate about is important so that you can then run with that passion and maybe and donate to environmental advocacy groups, uh, donate to uh, uh, politicians and uh, support politicians who are environmentally friendly and hold them accountable for their actions on the environment. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Justin Arisman, for recycling good information about being environmentally friendly. And now we're going to take that information you gave us and we're going to run it through the old Poundstonator. House band Daniel Grimsland, could I have a little background music? Uh, I- I'm going to tell you what I know now about living environmentally friendly. Yeah. I have spent years using bar mops to clean up spills and rogue cat pee in my house, and it turns out I may have caused California's water shortage. I'm sorry, Colorado, who California steals our water from. I thought I was saving trees by not using paper towels. Jesus, this is a blow. And I've been using bamboo toilet paper to avoid toilet paper made by clear-cutting forests, but the bamboo, it turns out, is taken from the set of Survivor. Look, you guys. Don't give up on your efforts to live an environmentally friendly life. But the truth is, to save the earth, vote. Vote hard, vote green. This problem is bigger than straws, but don't use straws. We need governments all over the world to help. The good news is, I don't have to buy any more toilet paper at all. This whole subject is constipating me. I don't think I'll ever poop again. He is an adjunct professor at the University of Southern California's Environmental Studies Program and a partner in Louis Roca Rothgerber Christie's Intellectual Property Practice Group. Wow. Thank you for being on our show, Justin Erisman. Coming up, Tony Anita Hull shares your descriptions of our show. That's coming up right after this. According to climate scientists, we have nine years and 42 weeks until the Earth begins to become uninhabitable. So, Paula, we've got a new sponsor tonight that we're excited about. Yeah, Lola. 
It's a, a female-founded company offering a line of organic cotton tampons, pads, liners, and all-natural cleansing wipes. Founders Jordana Kier and Alexandra Friedman started their company with a simple and seemingly obvious idea. Women shouldn't have to compromise when it comes to feminine care products. Now, I don't use feminine care products, but I do know a little bit about them. And, uh, don't go I can bragging t- about that. <laughs> Unlike other major brands, Lola products are 100% natural and easy to feel good about. No BS, no mystery fibers or doubts about what's going in your body. Plus, Lola products come in a simple, customizable subscription. Lola will deliver exactly what you need, exactly when you need it. Oh, I like that. The FDA doesn't require brands to disclose a comprehensive list of ingredients in their feminine care products. Which they should. Most of them don't, though. Lola offers complete transparency about the ingredients found in their tampons, pads, liners, and wipes. Major brands use a mix of synthetic ingredients. That that creeps me out just to say it. Synthetic ingredients in their products, (laughs) including rayon and polyester. (laughs) You can get a... Try poly poly tampon. That's exactly what I was going to (laughs) say. Lola products are 100% organic cotton with no added chemicals, fragrances, synthetics, or dyes. Founded by women for women, Lola makes your month a little bit easier. Lola offers pads, liners, and both BPA-free plastic applicator or environmentally friendly non-applicator tampons. And you'll be doing good with your purchase. For every purchase, they donate feminine care products to homeless shelters across the United States of America. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Well, you know what? I just placed my first order, and I am thrilled to not have to haul my carcass to the grocery store. They, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they deliver it right to your door in a discreet box. All right. And, well, I hope you used your code, Paula, because for 30% off your first month subscription, you can visit mylola.com and enter Poundstone when you subscribe for a whopping 30% off. Oh, that's a nice deal. That's mylola.com, Poundstone. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter 8989 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 8989. Enjoy. We're back, and I'm really starting to settle into this studio, Paul. I feel like I've got my chair adjusted right now. I, um, I've gotten used to the the, uh, the faces on the other side of the glass over in the incubator looking at us. Yeah, I keep tapping on the window. Just to make sure they're alive? Yeah, trying yeah. to get them to move. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to go into the little... A uh, tunnel there that I brought. Uh, you brought, I brought a habit trail? I brought a thing from uh, my fish tank. That wouldn't even be appropriate for babies in an incubator, let alone full-sized um, editors and producers. Yeah, but I, th- I think they can get through. Hey, wait! What? Hey, look! Uh, I, I, there's another bid! A bid oh, in our of, auction for uh, the papier-mâché uh, head. For the freedom head, the papier-mâché head, head. <laughs> from the um, Alcatraz Escape. Okay. Um, I, I'm uncomfortable calling it the freedom head. Because although although we do sentimentally want to root for people breaking out of prison, these we are, made movies about them. We make movies about them. We are talking about some genuine criminals who genuinely escaped from a prison and put themselves back in the general population. Okay, so the justice system, the and the uh, um, Alcatraz always believed that they died, that they perished in the in the water. I know and that, that was we my just belief. Never found their sure. bodies. Uh, it's, oh, that's by cold the way, water. In, in terms of not calling it the Freedom Head, I want you to know that the men who made it. Um, Named two of the heads Oink and Oscar. They had pet names. Well, which one do we have here tonight? Heads. This which, is Oscar. by the way, I'm unsure of the provenance of the, these heads. I'm sure. That, I'm not sure this is Oink or Oscar. This is Oscar. How do you know? Uh, because I asked when I got it. Um, okay. So in 2013, the FBI got a letter claiming to come from John Anglin, one of the brothers. Okay. Uh, saying oh. that he was alive. Right. And that he uh, he had cancer. And he was willing to agree 
to go back to prison for a year right. if he could get treated for his cancer. Wow. Yeah. Uh, how did the authorities respond to that letter? They didn't. In fact, they covered it up. They didn't even say they got the letter for a long time. Because they were embarrassed that he was alive? I don't know. They never really verified that he was or wasn't alive. I, I think they so tried we don't to know do, like, DNA stuff, but I don't likely know. likely that this guy just went ahead and died of cancer. Uh, more than likely. I, I, I think it's weird to get your health care from prison. What do you mean? I mean, I think it's weird to check into prison to get your health care. Well, I think that's a, that's a good statement about where we are today with health care in America. Am yeah. I right? Uh, Adam, answer the phone. What? Answer the phone. I, I don't think that's necessary at this juncture, Paula. Uh, answer the phone. Um, hello. Hello. I'm looking for Adam Felbach. Who's this? Uh, wow, who is this? Am I, by any chance, the 100th caller? No, you are not the 100th caller. If, if I'm counting correctly, you are the 40th caller on our program. That's all right. I don't want to hang out with you. Who is this? I'll give you a hint. I'm a wonderful tenor. A wonderful tenor. A fabulous hoofer. A, w- a fabulous hoofer. And most importantly, for our purposes, I am Winnie Rose Feynman's fixer. Oh, <laughs> you are Herschel Peckenstein, or whatever that name is. I am, uh, f- I forgive you, I am Herschel Bernardi Th- Jr. This is actually Herschel Bernardi. I am Herschel Bernardi Jr. Hoysh- Do I, I have to Hoysh- say it with a Brooklyn accent? I am Herschel Bernardi Jr. <laughs> okay, Herschel, well, welcome to our program. Oh, this is good, because I've been wanting to sp- speak to somebody from Winnie's World anyway. Um, I believe you are in breach of your contract with the Herschel Bernardi Community Theater in Huntington, New York. Okay, now, just because you're on our show, I do feel like I have to remind our listeners, our longtime caller, Winnie F- Rose Feynman, uh, decided to to book the Herschel Bernardi Community she Theater did book the for, Herschel Bernardi for theater. a production of Love Letters starring that me and correct. her. That and frankly, correct. I'm creeped out by her, and I was not going to be uh, willing to be in the... Your producer, director, Winnie Rose Feynman, tells me you have not been rehearsing your part in Love Letters. I have not been, because I've never consented to be in Love Letters. It was a voible agreement. There was no voible agreement. Well, Mr. Felba, you have fucked with the wrong shut-in. Uh, wait, who who's the shut-in here? You or Winnie? Uh, Miss Winnie Rose Feynman, your producer director. She's not my producer director. I've never In agreed. Love letters. No, love letters, Mister Bernardi. I'm sure your theater is lovely, but nothing is going to. My father, the, the, the theater was named after after my father. Oh, he was also Herschel Bernardi. Uh, yes, Herschel Bernardi, Herschel Bernardi Senior. Really? I am Herschel Bernardi Jr. Let me ask you something, Mr. Bernardi. Uh, what faith are you, if, if I can get personal? What are you? I'm asking if you're, you know, you, you with the name Herschel, I assume that you were, like my ancestry, Jewish. I'm, I'm Jewish. Okay, we don't name people after living people. It's just, it's absolutely taboo. It's, it's just my not father the... was dead uh, several months before I was born. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, you yeah, know what? You brought up a very painful topic, Mr. Velma. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry topic. I did that. Sorry I did that. Yeah. Uh, Touche. Okay. So, uh, listen, Mr. Bernardi, I'm sure you have a lovely theater. I, I want it's nothing. It's a lovely theater. It's named after my father. Her, the, the late Herschel Bernardi, Bernardi Sr., senior. <laughs> um, who never lived to have his name be made senior. It was a tragedy. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I'm not coming to do the show. What do you got to you? What do you got to you? What? Um, it's for that day. What no, do you mean? You're no, not no, coming no. to do the show. I'm actually an atheist. Um, I, um, well, don't I, let that stop you. You get a lot of gifts. You know, uh, Mr. Bernardi, for one, I'm not you going to do this. You've not been rehearsing your part. I can't spell letters. this out anymore. I have no intention of rehearsing the part. But you can do me a favor, sir, if you don't mind. And and I say this with respect. How did we reach that point in the conversation? We just, we just got there. Yeah. And here's the favor you could do. And it would be a favor to you and more than anything to Winnie Rose Feynman. You must know some nice people, especially running a theater. You must know some actors. I and know something. some very fine people. Could you introduce Winnie around a little bit? I think she needs to meet people... Human people, not on the podcasts or radios, around her. Mr. Velma, listen to me carefully right now. Okay. She has her heart set on you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have to go now. My client is calling on the other line. Oh, Jesus. Don't take All right. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bernardi. Okay. Wow. wow boy, you are in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why you don't see the... I don't know why you don't see the words written on the wall there. 
What, what, what are the words that are written on the wall, Paul? Rehoice! I'm not going to rehearse. <laughs> this is dangerous. I don't want to encourage her in any way. Um, I want to move us on. Can I yes, move us on? Yes, let's move us on. Now, let's, Paula, you've been Your various... legal troubles are not of interest to everyone. <laughs> Well, you've uh, at, at various times uh, uh, expressed a dissatisfaction with the way you describe our show. Is that correct? Yes, I'm not very good at describing the show. Now, and I've yeah, heard I you try. in interviews. In fact, I've been on stage before, and I say from the stage, I'll say, "Oh, I do a podcast called Nobody Listens to Paula Pound." So, and usually, you know, not a huge amount of people, but some people applaud and kind of hoot and indicate right. that they do listen to Nobody Listens to Paula Pound. So, and then I begin to try to describe it; it just falls apart. Right, and we've been soliciting with various degrees of success descriptions from our listeners of our podcast. In fact. And I want to take take a moment to take my hat off to your manager, our producer, Bonnie Captain Crinkle Burns, because on the new website, which is the now live, is up! it's up. The first thing you see are some of our listeners' show descriptions. It rotates in, and when you reload the page, you get a different show description, and it's wonderful. And you know, Bonnie for weeks has been guaranteeing us that by the time you hear the show. The podcast, the the new website will be up, and finally yeah. it is. It's up, and, and we said a, that's where you're going to be able to buy the beauty. buy the t-shirts and the pussy pillows. The poundstone pussy pillows are uh-huh. there. The tr- the t-shirts made from a uh, tri poly blend. The remarkably soft t-shirts, right. with the uh, self portrait on the left breast and a memorable quote on the back. They're available at paulapoundstone.com, which is the home are, of my new website. Are they though? Because at the moment we are recording this right now, yeah. the store on the website does not work. Well, no, but that Bonnie says <laughs> Bonnie says that's going to be fixed. Is that going to be fixed by the time yeah, no. that people hear the this podcast? The reason it's not working is Wendell's panicking. He's very concerned. <laughs> Your you know, Wendell, Wendell yeah. my assistant Wendell, who, who actually makes, sews the pussy pillows. He does. We, we, as you pointed out, we've we've made a sweatshop out of my son's old bedroom. And uh, Wendell goes in there all hours of the night, sewing right. the poundstone pussy pillows right. with the um, cat joke on one side and the and the grommet, so you can tie a string and tug the the uh, catnip Wh- toy. Which you should you should include the string. I don't include the string. The you know what? I don't want to enable the listeners. Well, I do. So the nobodies they bring their own string, uh, and then I can sign it to your cat on the other side. And Wendell is so worried. That there's going to be an influx of orders, an avalanche of orders. Yeah, that that, uh, that he hasn't gotten the necessary information about the website about the. He, he said he doesn't want the store part to be working until he has all his supplies ready. Okay, so Captain Crinkle, you can't guarantee one way or the other whether the store will be open for business at the time that the listeners hear this. No, it's going to be. It's up. It's, it's up. up. <laughs> it's up. <laughs> That it's, is the correct up. answer. Yeah, yeah, it's not necessarily the true answer, but it is on this yeah. show the no, correct it's up. answer. It's up. Go ahead, you guys. Go over there, paulapoundstone dot com, and uh, you know, f- it just feast your eyes on the on now, the now uh, we shopping don't, center. We don't yet is. have an adjunct site a link, but we will soon. What is to, adjunct site? Uh, just a, a related site uh, that's going to piggyback on yours. What does adjunct mean? Uh, connected to. So someone's an adjunct professor. They're connected to a professor. I think so. Huh. You want to look up adjunct? Or, I don't. Or, okay, then let's continue. Okay. Um, you know, because Paula doesn't uh, attach the string to the grommet, I'm attaching the string to the grommet at a related site, and I will sell them to you. <laughs> Buy the pussy pillows, send them to me, and uh, you can have not Paula Poundstone's pussy pillows, but uh, Felber's feline fun bags for a low, low price. Uh, this is a total lie. That's not true, you guys. Get the Poundstone pussy pillow. There get is, get, there get is, the fun bags because it's, it's is, like no, the pussy pillow right. with a less see, offensive name. If you <laughs> see... <laughs> Tony Anita Hall is hating Adam that. Adam only says that because it upsets Tony when he says fun bags, <laughs> which is not a, an expression that I had ever... Heard before I heard Adam say. Speaking of Tony Nita Hall, let's get her up to the microphone. Tony, uh, you've got more uh, uh, show descriptions from our listeners. Okay, before Tony tells her show descriptions, she's never going to get to that. No, she is. You know how she got back from this cruise, right? Yeah. With the, you know, by the skin of her fucking teeth. All right, so she's she's going to take a cruise with her brother and her niece, and uh, and then it gets dry docked for four days because of coronavirus, and then somebody spills wine on her brother, and he decides not to come, which was the whole reason Tony was going in the first place. And then her niece, who's her age and does not get along with Tony, they spend the whole cruise yelling at each other and crying at interest. Intervals. Yeah, and as a result of this, Tony, what have you done? I booked another cruise. <laughs> yeah, just in time. 
for the for the virus to I'm flower. I told you. I was listening to NPR <laughs> one day, and they had a you know like a virus expert on, and he said, if they were going to construct. <laughs> A laboratory for the, you know, a, a fertile ground for the virus to replicate. At- if evil aliens were to say, how can we eliminate the human race? The <laughs> answer would, would be. A cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> because it's cruise. people in tight quarters. There's no, there's no, they talked about how they were quarantining people. Well, they weren't quarantining people because the ventilation system goes from room to room and it's an airborne uh, virus. And so, and then people all eating together and a at lot a buffet. Of, and a lot of older it's people. It's always buffets, isn't yeah, it, Tony? Yeah, there's always people like touching the shrimp with one finger and oh, that, oh, it's not big enough. I don't like the shrimp. I, I sneezed on it, but I don't want it anymore. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. Well, why? Why? We got a great deal. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so you are you and your brother are going to get that great cruise that you didn't get. Yeah, it's in December. Lots of time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we should be totally through. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm French Strop. I'm, I am wearing a mega mask. Oh, look at that, everybody. It is, it's our second favorite hand puppet on the show, French Trump. The best way to prevent the beer virus is to avoid talking to scientists, doctors, and public health experts. <laughs> All right. Do not worry about this virus, Tony Anita Hall. You are the poster child for the virus. Oh, boy. It will just wow. disappear like a miracle, Tony. That's how it will work, Tony Anita Hall. It will disappear like a miracle. Did it say that on your brochure from the cruise company? <laughs> Trump, it didn't. Yeah, well, that's it. I'll tell you what, Tony, you need to hell. Vote for me and you will not get the virus. A vote for you, French Trump. Vote for French Uh, Trump is a vote against the virus. You will not get it. I want to go back a few minutes. I I don't think we even need to rewind the tape. Uh, Did you call it the beer virus? It's the beer virus. (laughs) It's caused by beer. It is not caused by it beer. It is <laughs> Corona beer. No, it, yeah, it absolutely matter with you? has nothing you, to do with beer. Do you not watch the news? I, no, I know that it is a form of coronavirus. Yeah, but it's Corona precisely. No, but Corona means head. Ah. Uh. It's a head cold, basically. It's a he- is it not a head cold? Well, yeah, it's a virus. It's that- like a cold. You are right. You are right. Well, thank you, It French is like Trump. a cold. That's exactly right. And you, you can use a flu shot. That will help. You can use any kind of shot. You can shoot up heroin, and you will not get the coronavirus. <laughs> I am almost certain that's not true. Any kind of needle injected into yourself will protect you so long as you vote for Trump. <laughs> This is am- this is an amazing amount of disinformation, and it's no the wonder that people like Tony Nita Hall are booking the cruises. Beer virus <laughs> is to stay in a Trump hotel, or eat a Trump steak, or <laughs> buy some of Ivanka's cheesy clothing. You just called it cheesy. Uh, cheesy cloth. Cheesy cloth, okay. <laughs> Cheese cloth, you sure? You can also wear a thick layer of crap on your face. What kind of crap? Uh, you know, makeup crap. Yeah, like I do, or like if I could do. Oh, you mean like and spray you tan? Find neither of us get sick at all. <laughs> it is startling and, and dismaying how healthy you seem. Some uh, of the you, time. you know, you, uh, Tony, I need to look a little pale. You could use some orange <laughs> crap for your face, and that would be a protective layer. I uh, hope your cruise is headed to China. <laughs> Why would you hope her cruise is headed to China for Because now that she has the protection of the orange stuff on her face, a mega mask, vote for Trump, she should be fine. All right. Well, I guess that, that's... that's. Are you going to China on the cruise, Tony? I am not. Where are you headed? Where are you going on your um, cruise? We're going to Mexico and Panama. Oh, very healthy places. <laughs> French Trump, I, I, I'm The completely... healthiest of places. Oh, my God. It's, it's Many fun. people in Mexico are trying to live there. Did you know that? <laughs> trying to leave there. Many people in Mexico try to live there. Live there or leave there? Live there. Leave there or leave there? <laughs> live there. What are you saying? There. What? Leave there. Live there. No. Leave there. Leave there. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Jesus. You don't listen, Adam Felper. Oh, that is your problem. You I, know, if you vote for Trump, I'm not going to vote for you Trump. You will not get the virus. I, no, the voting is not <laughs> is not a prophylactic against catching a virus. It is. 
It is not. It is. No, it is. Put this red MAGA mask on. No, I will, I will not you. wear your red MAGA mask. And any needle, any needle you use, you can just stab yourself well and broil a rang, and you are cured. <laughs> I, again, <laughs> I would have to check some sources, but I'm pretty sure that that's not medically the accurate information. It should be ready any day now. Don't talk to scientists. It should be ready <laughs> any day now. <laughs> We, all right, I, it's going to be ready any day now. It's I about the to... same time that the uh, Poundstone store will be up on the website. Oh, that's up. Yeah. Who's up? Yes. Oh, I the was virus just is up. ready. Yeah, Bonnie Burns, is it up? <laughs> the vaccination up? is No, we need to ask. Up? I'm sorry. We need to hear from French Burns on that. Uh, <laughs> it's up. Uh, that's uh, well, she that's not even French Canadian. <laughs> <boat. laughs> <laughs> Tony All Anita, right. how All you're right. throwing your laugh away. <laughs> can we? Can I talk to Paula in there? Hello. Hi, Paula. Yeah. Hello. Um, how so are can you? we get can we get Tony Anita Hall to maybe read us some show descriptions? Oh, would you, Tony? Are, are you going to read us show descriptions? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> why we why didn't you say so? <laughs> what the heck? That'll be great. What you got, Hall? <laughs> um, Kevin Buckley wrote. Nobody Listens to Paula Poundstone is a comedy podcast wherein Paula Poundstone humorously explores all avenues of life while not always staying within the boundaries of truth. The show is often interrupted by the torrid bromance between co-host Adam Felber and his best friend, Mike Boom Boom Bonifit. Oh. You know, Adam, answer the phone. No! Answer the phone! I know where this is going. Answer the phone! Hello? Hey, Adam, it's Mike Boom Boom Boom. Hi, hey, Mike. Man, I just heard our bromance <laughs> was brought up on the show. That's so great. You That's know, really the opposite I really of great, do, Mike. I really do. You know, I'll tell you something, man. I, usually, I don't usually say this to guys. Okay. You know, but I do really care about you, man. You could have really just as easily not said that, Mike, and no, I man, felt I'd, the same. You, could you, you already felt it? You felt that I really care? Because I do, man. I really care for you. How you doing, Mike? Uh, it's good It's good to talk to you. You know, uh, so you guys are in a new studio or something? Yeah, we're in a new studio. I hope they put that woman, like, in another booth or something. Something Which woman, you. Mike? You know, that, who was that? You worked up, Paul, Paul, Paul Poundstone, the yeah. titular host of this program? Ah, uh, titular. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the second it came out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, just... man, she's titular. You're right, man. No, that she's means that she's some... the name in the title, she's Mike. She's got some titulars. You're, you're not, oh, man. Oh, I, see, I knew you would be thought the same. I oh, knew it, Jim. good heavens. Man, yeah. <laughs> She's breast killer. No, that's a completely, <laughs> completely different. Um, anyway, yes, Paula Poundstone yeah, is still bobular. the host. That's why she's bobular. <laughs> bobular, Mike? Chugs Poundstone. Man, that's so great. Oh, man, I, I hate this. I don't know work with her. She's such a bitch. Oh, now, hey there, Mike. I think I've warned you a couple of times, and I don't want that kind of talk sullying our new studio home. Just, no, uh, just no, If no. you're going to break out that kind of language about my friend and co-host, Paula Poundstone. Oh, I, you I... mean the titular one? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Mike, I don't... Am I the 100th caller? You're not. Am you're I the 100th caller? 41. I really... I can't... 41? 41. Oh, man. I, can, I cannot uh, wait. You and me both, man. I, I want to... this to be over. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to hang out with you after the game. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Hey. Is there any way? Do I have to go online or can I just bid on Oscar? Bid on Oscar? <laughs> yeah. The what, Freedom what? Head. The Freedom Head, man. Oh, the Freedom, the freedom Head. head. Oh. I just, you know, like I, sometimes I run a little, you know, I, you, you know, I run up against the law a little bit. It would just be good to have a Freedom Head in my back pocket. <laughs> You know what I mean? I doubt it would fit you in your back I mean? pocket. If I ever but... get, like, in a slammer, you know what I mean? If, I'm ever, if they ever, like, fucking throw me in Alcatraz, I would have a goddamn freedom. So well, Mike, Mike I think you should get off the phone, get online, because I feel like you're the dial-up sort, and uh, maybe uh, <laughs> minute, put, a, put a bid on the... Uh, Wait a minute, dial-up. I feel like you might still use a dial-up modem to connect to the Internet. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think I do. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, I do recommend that you get that, that Oscar the head because, yeah. um, you know what? He'd look great in the passenger seat of your Trans Am and enable you to drive in the HOV lane. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. That'd so, be great. Why don't yeah. you go ahead and bid on that, Mike? Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to get I thought maybe if I just put in a word with you. you no, know? no, that's not, how, that's not how an auction works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, are you like straight or something? What? Like, I mean, do you, like, not cheat or something like that? Wait, I mean, no, I... No, man, I knew you were straight. What, well, you think I'm coming on you or something? It felt no, like man. it. I knew you were straight. Okay. Oh, no, no, it felt like you were coming on to me. No, I wasn't coming on to you. Were you, were you kidding me? I, I, it I, felt like... All right, all right. No, 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 no. I missed signals, I guess. Adam, okay. man, I'm, I, I, I'm a guy. You know, I'm a 
like guy. I'm into guy things. I like guy. I no, I like. You just I, said I, you I, like guys. I know. I mean, I like you, not like that. Oh man, don't oh. you have Winnie Rose Fryman to get a little something extra? God damn it, Mike! No. Um, look, uh, she loves you, man. She loves you. I mean, I like you, but she loves you. You should you know give her I mean? a call because uh, she's available. Maybe, maybe you guys could start calling each other. I feel like this might be a solution to, to two very deep problems in my life. <laughs> yeah, Think about giving problems, Winnie a call. Man. You got a lot of problems. You work with a titular woman. <laughs> Goodbye, Mike. Goodbye. If I knew how to hang up this phone, I would. Goodbye. All See right. you, Adam. See you. Bye. Okay, so, uh, Tony! Yeah! Oh, man, my rock. Man. How are you? What else do we have, uh, description-wise? Uh, yeah, Dominic from Tucson wrote, um, Meandering chaotic trip down the rabbit hole that is Paula Poundstone's mind. Seemingly pointless, but odd- oddly satisfying, much like life itself. Well, that's... Ooh, I like that. I do. I don't love seemingly pointless, because I think we are explicitly pointless. <laughs> No, I think it, you know, it it appears that it's going to be pointless, and then it makes a, a hard left. Into what? <laughs> Pointiness. Point. Pointiness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sharp points. Okay. Crystal clarity. I, I do like that. Dominic from Tucson, I, I like that one. That one, I could see that one just popping up on the website. I, yeah, yeah, I could too. Before Thank the you, store Dominic. does. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. Let's see. Any others? Uh-huh. It's not um, up, honey. And, uh, uh-huh. Um, and finally, Isla Harlow said, Nobody Listens to Paula Poundstone is the prequel podcast where you find out why Adam stops coming to every show. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I was Paula, so you know, you're not getting that. It. No. She says it's the prequel podcast where you find out why I stopped coming to every show. Oh. Because, you know, the, the gag that I loathe about me on the show is that I'm on every show. Well, you are, though. Yeah, but yeah. I, I and think, one well, of our listeners made note of it in one of the uh, theme songs. Yes, and then every listener now makes note of it because you Well, because once it a lot. their attention was drawn to it, it's just hard to avoid. You are well, on I think once every their attention was drawn show. to Yes, that's right. And yeah. I think there's other things we could say about me. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> no. Anyway, Isla, I, I, I take your meaning and I, I thank you for that. Wait a minute. Did I tell you we had another bid? No. Did I tell we had not, did I I can't remember if I told you about this one. I don't know. You you have you've barely I, oh, been here. There's crazy. been all these phone it calls. It just and happened a minute visits. ago and then I got distracted. Yeah. I, I'm sorry if I seemed like not I, I was like, we have a five hundred thousand dollar bid for the freedom ad. Oh wow. It's That's from a... Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah. Technically, it's from all of us because he's using taxpayer money since Amazon pays no taxes. Yeah. Uh, are you going to stand for that, Scott Franciscus? I'm going to try to get Scott. To- You're not going to get Scott to bid more than a half a million dollars. Huh. Scott, I don't think Scott has that kind of money. Wait a minute. Scott Franciscus, because there it is. What? Wait. All right, now we've got an auction. <laughs> Scott Franciscus. Do we even our, have... Okay. Our benefactor just bid... Five hundred thousand fifty dollars. Oh, well, I'm for sure. The freedom sure head. Bezos is out then, huh? <laughs> for Oscar. Yeah. Too rich for my blood, said wow. the richest man on the planet. Yeah, uh. yeah. No, he's probably out. Yeah. All yeah. right. All right. So, uh, Tony, got another description? That was the last one. Ah, oh, shit. Uh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Jeff Bezos is back. Oh wow. For six hundred thousand dollars for the freedom head. Wow. This is more than. The Lewis and Clark keelboat went. Well, I like from. that he went big and and just basically added another hundred thousand, kind of showing Scott Franciscus who has the money to throw around here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think Franciscus is finally out. Anywho, if you want to reach uh, out to us about anything, email us at nobody listens to Paula Poundstone at gmail dot com. Wait a minute. Oh no, Paul Manafort <laughs> must have had time to call his former employer, the Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska, because he is back. <laughs> With six hundred thousand one hundred dollar bid for the Freedom Head, this is unbelievable. This is quite an exciting auction going on. Oh man, Paul Out Manafort there. really wants Oscar the Freedom Head. Yeah, I, I, again, Paul Manafort, if you're spending more than half a million dollars for paper mache head, it's not that. It's not that good. I mean, I'm looking at it right here. It's just a. It's a crudely don't done. Don't touch it. Don't it's touch a, it. Do yeah, you, I don't. When you touch the eyebrows, they come off. It's flimsy. <laughs> It's a flimsy, flimsy head. It's not going to be helpful for... It's a piece of history, Adam. I don't think Manafort wants it for like, history. If I had, like, the Declaration of Independence here, you'd go, oh, look, I could just tear this. It's flimsy. Okay. It's a piece okay. of history. Yeah, no, 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 no. Point it's taken. a piece of history. It is a piece of history. It's Oscar, the freedom head. <laughs> 
Can that be sung to the tune of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Oscar the Freedom Head. Yes. <laughs> More or less. All right. Now, um, speaking of hotel soap, Paula, uh, where are you going to be performing next? You know, I hate promoting myself. It's the one part of my job that I really dislike. And yet the fans love it so much. Please, Paula, please tell us where you're going to be. All right, moving on. I'm in Stewart, Florida, at the Lyric Theater on March 28th. Uh I'll be in New York City at Town Hall on April 30th, and on June 26th, I'm in Thousand Oaks, California. That's right around here. At the Civic Arts Plaza. It is. I drove past it on my way here tonight. (laughs) Yeah. Come to think of it, I drove past the Lyric Theater in Stewart, Florida as well. (laughs) Yeah, I bet you did. Oh, my God. Anything else you want to promote while we're here? Well... I do like to mention my Butterfinger single, my rap, my social justice rap song called Not My Butterfinger, and the ringtone are also now available for download on my new website, paulapoundstone.com, as well, of course, as the pussy pillows and the t-shirts that we mentioned earlier. All right, now speaking of Butterfingers, Paul. I heard I, you. I heard you on. Uh, uh, you're you're like Captain Crinkle's nephew or something. No, what no, no. I, I wanted I it. Like I wanted it to be heard. Sound. This will work continuity wise, and then oh, you'll, you'll you'll soon understand why. Okay. See, a couple of weeks ago, we uh, received a thousand dollars in a request, <laughs> which was from um, Max Hodges of. Uh, I thought o- it was going to be from Trump. No, of OMG uh, Japan. Do me a favor. And if you remember, they have over like 180 flavors of Kit Kats in Japan. That's and, crazy. And OMG Japan. Uh, will import them. You can go to their website and order it, and their store is up. Oh, mine's up. Oh, yeah. Mine's sure. up, yeah. Anyway, so we've been testing these really weird flavors of Kit Kats, and we're under no obligation to like them. Um, I thought it would be fun to do a blind taste test with this one. Paula, uh, okay. you can Hold describe on. it if you want. First of all, I have to blind myself. Do you have the acid? Uh, no, 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 no. You just have to not <laughs> not know what you're eating. It seems painful, <clears throat> but for this show, for these nobodies, it's a metaphorical I am blindness. Happy to you're do fine. It. You no, know no, what no. I mean? Less trips to the what, eye doctor. That's you, my feeling. Why don't, you, why don't you just talk about what you're seeing in your hand there? <laughs> okay, I am seeing uh, a waxy. Kit Kat. But it's not uh, Kit Kat colored. No, it's um, it's a tan color. It's almost the same color of, as Oscar, uh, the Freedom Head. Yeah, it's got a paper mache look to it. Yeah, it kind of does. And I know what flavor it is. You, you don't. I, I do, think we should taste these. You do know what these. flavor it is? Yes. All right, ready? Let's go. All right. What are you thinking, Paul? <laughs> wow, that's a weird flavor. Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, based on the consistency, uh huh, oh, the waxy exterior, yeah. I'm gonna say Mitch McConnell's cheek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? I I I think somebody like Ransom Marzipan threw Mitch McConnell and served us what came out the other what end. What the fuck is Marzipan? It's like that 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 almond, isn't it? Like almond based. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Why do you guys know that? Did because you learn a, that on a cruise? It's a fairly common confection, and yes, yes they appear at cruise buffets. I never, <laughs> I never heard of that confection. Marzipan? Never heard of it. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe it'll it. show up in the vocabulary song. Yeah, maybe it just will. Here, answer the phone, Adam. Answer the phone. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Adam, it's me, Mike Boom Boom Barfit. Everybody heard of Marzipan. What the fuck's the matter with that girl? Everybody uh, heard of Marzipan. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, just wanted to say that. I just want to back you up. Say, am I the hundred caller? N- no, you're not. Forty-two. Oh, fuck. All right, I'll call you back. No, you don't have to. Okay. Um. So, <laughs> Paula, so I never heard of marzipan. What do you think of the thing you just ate, though? It's a country that Tony's taking a cruise to. <laughs> That's marzipania, <laughs> where marzipan Visit comes marzipan. from. Marzipan. Marzipania, the, I think, is the where the virus national. is taking over. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the? Uh, you got a goddamn <clears throat> death wish, Tony Anita Hall. That's your I'd problem. Love to get life. Wow. And and apparently your brother. <laughs> I love I love that. It's a whole family thing. <laughs> yep. Do you want to? Yeah, I want to. That's beautiful. <laughs> this is why we I... don't do taste tests on this show. Oh, Did you like the candy? I... <laughs> no. You thought it tasted like Mitch McConnell. <laughs> tastes like Mitch McConnell's cheek. Okay. In fact, his right cheek. Well, you might have been you might be right. It was actually face cheek. I mean face cheek. Face cheek. Yeah. 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 The actual flavor was Momiji Momju. Oh, of course. It's a buck- Oh fuck, that was right. <laughs> I knew it started with an M. That's what I knew. Yeah, you and were I, very close. So you with... Mitch McConnell, Momibi. Same Manju. initials. Yeah. M.M. Yeah. yeah. By the way, you voters in Kentucky, um, vote Momibi Manju. Look for it. <laughs> yeah, look for it on the ballot this, this fall. Yeah. Um, that, it's a um, buckwheat maple leaf shaped rice. Oh, of course. That was the flavor is. of Kit Kat we sampled this week. Buckwheat maple leaf <laughs> shaped rice. What do you mean maple leaf shaped 
I don't know. Tony Nita Hall told me. My, maple leaf. She, it was the. How do you shape was, rice like maple leaf? Well, and what does that have to do with it? It was a Kit Kat. It was shaped like a Kit Kat. There was no shape inside. Oh, it's like it looks like it looks like it might be a popular rice pastry or rice cake that's shaped like a maple leaf in oh. Japan. You hear and there's me, a picture this of it on the wrapper. Written in Japanese, like yeah, but I'm there's a picture to of a maple leaf it. shaped cake. Oh yeah, I see what it says. Yeah. yeah. No, Mamiji yeah. Mamju. Yeah. No, it's Mamiji Manju. No, I see what it says. No, you don't. You just. No, you're just making Japanese esque sounds. It's not anything. Now you're pretending to read Japanese very carefully. I, of course, I'm reading it. I'm reading it left to right. Yeah, I'm not. Do you know why? No. Do you? Because I'm Japanese Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to move on. No, that would be right to left. Excuse me, I take it back. That would be right to All left. All right. Anyway, you can find a complete list of Paula's upcoming performances at paulapoundstone.com. Uh, we'll be back with more in Mon- like, no, listen to Paula Poundstone. After this. How come we Thank you, Tony Hall. Fun fact German chocolate cake is named after a man named Sam German and not the country. The country Germany is named after Sam's brother, Max. That's true. Sam German. How come me, Mom? Okay, welcome back, Paula. <laughs> Can I talk to Paula there? Uh, we're, we're, any, the, anything you the, want to uh, the, yes, report? I mean, we're... Thumba. Oh, my God. <laughs> Japanese poundstone is the last thing <laughs> this show needs right now. <laughs> <laughs> Is, yeah. Do you want to report on the results of our auction? Because we got to go. Uh, we have uh, mini Kit Kats available. Was, uh, that, was that Japanese? That you're doing Adam, a hand puppet? Adam Song. Many, oh, Adam Song. Well, at least many, I'm getting an honorific many, here. Many Kit Kats are available. <laughs> um, there are many Kit Kats available. Do you remember when uh, the Japanese Prime Minister Abe? Thank you. Uh, came to, and they had the cake at uh, Mar-a-Lago, and. Brought the, the, the wife and... Uh, Mrs. Abe. Yes. And um, <laughs> Melania took her out, like Trump and, you know, the men met, the presidents met, and then Melania took poor Mrs. Abe. This is a true thing, I swear I'm not making this up. Okay, yeah. She took her to fe- Japanese gardens in Florida. Wow, now, really? Wouldn't you think that Mrs. Abe was like, we have those. Yeah, I would yeah. think I would think that that would be when it. Do you think that she felt like yeah? But you know, I I bet they. Why not just take her to a Hello Kitty for God's sakes? A Hello Kitty store? Yeah, exactly. What is it? What is the bug up your butt about Hello Kitty? You really, <laughs> you really have a problem with Hello Kitty, and I don't get it. <laughs> a, really, you, you know what? If you I were like to write a children's years? book right now, it would be called "What Is the Bug Up Your Butt About Hello Kitty?" <laughs> <laughs> it's, that is so lyrical. <laughs> uh, you really do. You really have it I in know, for Hello Kitty. I know, woman. Uh, we swallowed a bug up her butt about Hello Kitty. Um, what are you asking me? Is so, you know what? what? We have only a few more seconds before the auction is closed. Yeah, let's change the subject. Going once for six hundred thousand one hundred dollars from Paul Manafort. Going twice. And let me remind listeners: if you are online and want to bid on this auction, this is your last chance. And wait a minute. What? Scott Francisco says our high bidder with a new bid of $600,125. Yes. Thank you, Scott Francisco. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's that's a lot of money for our show. Yeah, we could have used that money, Scott. Yeah. Uh, Assuming but no, he's that's good fantastic. for it. Oh, yeah. Of course he's good for it. I that's don't know fantastic. About that. yeah. well, well, Scott, we're going to. Uh, Tony is right now shoving Oscar. The freedom head from the uh, escape from Alcatraz into an envelope. From the Alcatraz escape, not the movie Escape from Alcatraz. That no, will be from next the Alcatraz talking. escape, exactly. Yeah. It's original Oscar head of Oink and Oscar. Yeah, Tony, I would put that in a box. It's it's going to be <laughs> yeah, postage due, think, and then yeah, Scott Francis won't that, pay this time. I don't think that envelope is going to fit it. And Tony, you're taking the eyebrow off. Be careful. This is original. This is a piece of history. <laughs> All right, nobodies. Remember, our email address again is nobody listens to Paula Poundstone at gmail.com. And you can find me and Adam on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can find my remarkably soft tri poly blend t shirt with a self portrait on the left breast and a memorable quote on the back at paulapoundstone.com. This store really is up. 
That's our show, everybody. <laughs> Nobody listens to Paula Poundstone. It's hosted by Paula Poundstone and yours truly, Adam Felber. Produced by Paula Poundstone, Adam Felber, Bonnie Burns, Kent Lazebnik, Tony Anita Hall, and Land Romo. Technical direction by Jessica Gutierrez. And mixing by Michael Hoagie. Special thanks to tonight's house band, Daniel Grimsland. <laughs> and thanks to our guest, adjunct professor Justin Arisman. Transcription services for the show provided by Transcribe Me. For your special Paula Poundstone discount, use code Paula Poundstone when placing your order at transcribeme.com. That's our show for tonight. Won't somebody please listen to me? Six hundred thousand dollars, huh? No, six hundred. Six hundred thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars. Wow. Well, yeah. No, that's boy. Thank you, Scott. Um, yeah. The the store is up. But I got to tell you, uh, there's a wall in my house that has uh, a hole in it, the shape of Wendell. (laughs) Oh, it's getting frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. He just, yeah. Ran out. Yeah. Cartoon like leaving a silhouette of himself cut out of the wall. Right right through my son's old bedroom slash sweatshop. That's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I don't know. Listen, it's like my assistant tying all those strings on the grommets. That's not even real. Star Bands Audio, a podcast, <clears throat> a podcast network.